The Cumbria Way is a 73 mile linear hike through some of the most beautiful and contrasting landscapes that Cumbria has to offer. Join myself and Fern as we head from the historic town of Ulverston, taking in the mountains, lakes, woodlands and glacial valleys of the Lake District, ending in the equally historic city of Carlisle. We're heading up there into Demdare Hills. Fern's sort of flapping her arms because she's got goose down top on. I think she's a goose. Because you... Oh, why are you going round? Because it's nice this way. <laughs> Fern's going the scenic route because cow. Because cow. But we all know. We. Sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't scare it, I slipped. It's on camera, I slipped and it ran a little bit. And that just goes to show how scared that cow is. Of you. Of me. And it's also turning round. No, don't, don't do anything rash, guy. <laughs> hey, mate. Just a nervous standard latch and lock. Or is it because somebody's defaced this rock with a penis? Unbelievable. And also, before you say it, it wasn't me, even though I'm not mad at it. It's each to their own as far as taste, but for me, I like it. There could have been, the shaft could have been a little bit thicker, but webs. We stopped off for breakfast and we're off again. We're gonna try and put some serious miles in now. And this will be our first serious elevation and hike up into the fells like i'll film it just in case these in case it's the last thing i ever film but when see that's a warning moo but we're just giving them a wide berth and they'll be fine no drama no beef and these little cows or sheep as some people call them just getting on with their own their own lives look we're just heading towards this. That's our first big climb out. And if anyone can think of a fruit beginning with Y, chuck it in the comments below. <laughs> Be interested to know. Come on, you're late. <laughs> Looking forward to getting up there. It'll be colder. The temperature will drop up there, which will be quite welcomed after we've put a shift in getting up there. And this will bring us into Black Moss Pot, which was somewhere I've camped out a few times, but never come in from this direction. I've always looked up from there thinking, I wonder what's over that hill. And now I'm getting to find out. Steak Pass or Esk House. I think we're this way. That's where we're going, fast track. There we are. To the top of our, uh, what we thought was the top, full summit. So we've got about half of all that to go again. But the sun has gone behind these clouds now, which gives us a little bit of respite. And I reckon that's probably the hardest bit of today I've done. It's making that water seem very, very inviting. Fern just smashed it out of the park with it. Uh, both feeling strong. And uh, the goal is today to get to Keswick. Or at least outside of Keswick, either side. And then we're back on track from our slow start. But now, I've got to navigate all this. The Cumbria way, it's beautiful. And I know I'm not talking to you like I normally do on my long distance hikes, but I can't always, it can't always just be me and you guys. Sometimes it's got to be other people, so I can't just waffle, waffle bollocks to you, which I know some of you might not like anyway. So this is more about scenic views. And there you go. It'd be quite weird if I was following you like a duck. Too much space. I was going to follow you. <laughs> You can see how far we've come. You can see the, the little river there or stream that snakes 
by the side of the path and then all the way around there and climbed up there it didn't look too much from here but it was a decent climb up and then we've just stopped we're calling this morning break we're gonna have a brew some dried fruit and then we're gonna bat on through there I think it is betwixt these two peaks and then I think we'll find somewhere to to dunk our heads you've got to do a bit of that just chuck it in chuck it in if any audio exists in either of these cameras, Fern has just <laughs> stuffed a dry banana into my gator slash sock. And I don't know why. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> Just using these posh coffee bags um, from Harrogate. <gasps> oh shit! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 she's stuffing my socks with dried fruit. She's spilled over our m m our morning coffee is here. Good morning, cruel world. Well done, fan. We just stopped here to have our coffees. Well, we're on the second coffee because Fern drop kicked the other one off the end of the cliff. Oh. And uh, I thought I'll just have a little rummage for ticks, and I found one so far here. And Fern has just found one pretty much in the same place because copycat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I'll just show you the safest way to get them out. So in my first aid kit, I always carry a mirror, and that is to check for ticks if I'm on my own just around the old private parts and then he's off he wasn't that far in I must have just caught him but he's out of there what you don't want to do some people say burn them off you don't want to burn them off because they'll just be sick into you into you into you you don't want to crush them because then again not for Lyme's disease but just for infection and then keep an eye on it afterwards if you get any sort of red rings around it or it starts itching then just go to the doctors get some antibiotics just to air on the side of caution but that's it feel good i was feeling a bit left out not getting any ticks so we really are on a hike now so you can see his little antennae do you reckon they are antennae but it's just good, to, it's it good to be able to see that that the whole top of them do you know what i mean yes isn't it's it not open. yeah because you don't want to leave any bit of them in you. no and there we go tick buddies Way. yay This is where we're going. Eagle crag, black one caught on the one side of the video for people. I think they might have fallen. What's where you're going as well, Jack? I was trying to walk really smooth. That'll be a gimbal. Absolutely killed it. This is stunning. And the bottom of the valley, when I cut across there, we're doing the coast to coast. Up onto these. Look how clear that is. Do you ever shave a sheep? What? Do you ever shave a sheep? No, have you? No. The end. I'll put that here and I'll boot it into the river. <laughs> right? That if that isn't a lesson to not walk across there, don't do it. Cause you will fall in there. Were well, you gonna walk across that? With a bag on your back, like as unsturdy as you are. There by your left leg. We're gonna get left foot forward. 
I just said, can you walk across the bridge, not do some mad stunt where you kick your phone into water and <laughs> just walk across it? Oh. Yeah, I'll do. Cut. Right there. There she goes, look. Intrepid adventurer, Fern. We're, We're not even going over this bridge. It was for nothing. She was going to risk her life. Were you going to, you were going to just... I was just going to, I was going to crawl across. No. Oh. Liverpool steel, look at that. <sighs> I'm bringing this one because it's got hand carved acorns in these look like 9 by 9 fence posts and someone's just whittled up with a chainsaw because you can see the grooves there but oh no we've got to put some shoulder work into it don't like that but I do like that 7 o'clock day 3 um, it's been our first day of going up and down today but we're still going at seven o'clock and there's a pub maybe 40 minutes away um, and we're taking this detour through the woods just to get to the pub just to get a pint maybe get something to eat and then we're gonna just camp near somewhere around the pub and then make our way to Keswick in the morning do you know Groot off yeah. like and Groot there you go guys thank you <laughs> Right, talking shit to the camera now, a little bit tired, a little bit brain dead. The shores of Derwent Water, and I wish I could tell you more about it, but I don't have the map or the guidebook to hand, so all I know is that it's a big bit of water. There she is, look. Stomping ahead, leaving me in the dust. We found a huge pair of hands, look. It's so still. There's the tent. We had our fire down there. And we're on this little nab. And then just beyond that hill there is Keswick and that's where we're heading to this morning. And we're gonna up the tent relatively early. Cause just, we pitched in the dark, we leave early. Leave no trace, no problem. And we've maybe got 45 minutes of a hike into Keswick, get some breakfast, go see the boys at Nordic Outdoors, and then we crack on. Damage report, feeling good, legs feel good, no blisters, it's happy days. Look at that, look how tranquil that is. And you've got the mist rising off the off the lake. It's beautiful, isn't it? There you go, leave no trace. Just a bit of flattened grass and we'll skip off as the sun bounces off the Derwent, beautiful. LNT. We'll take some of these um, sycamore leaves and these can be used as a natural soap which I'm in need of and I will use later on today. There we are, Derwent water. We camped probably around here, 
where my finger is. And that's Keswick where we've just had breakfast and we're just heading up out of Keswick. And then there's a multiple choice question. There's a multiple, ant like, turn to page 32 if you want to go the highway, 42 if you want to go the low way. We sort of think we're going to go the hard route, but we'll see how we feel. And there's wild boar in here, deer, wherever that thing is. <laughs> so this will be our second sort of biggish day on the bounce. It's the last day of being in Lakeland. So I think we're going to make the most of it and go the mountain route. Like everywhere we look, as Bill just said, she's just wetting the back of her neck to keep cool because it's a hot, it's a hot one today. Um, but everywhere is just beautiful to look at. And this little stream here is giving us big stream dreams. So we're gonna, gonna get a bit of hiking done and we look forward to having a little dunk at some point. That is what I was craving on the South Downs way and the Cleveland way is that. And as I said before, you can just, you're never too far away from some water that you can just dunk in or drink. It's plateaued out into this sort of huge valley of heather. The purples and the greens. It's pretty nice. And I think that's where we're heading up there. Over at tops. The sun's gone behind clouds now so it's not as fierce. Not as the last couple of big hikes I've done. Uh, all very different, giving different like messages to me. From it's all about the journey to spontaneity. And I think this one is about like just slowing down a little bit and not gunning it like I normally do. That's the way it comes out, so the labour of love, but when you're thirsty, you'll do anything for a sip of the good stuff. <laughs> We've got not got much left, but we've got all our own trail snacks. We've got some beef jerky. I did do a video, which I'll leave there, on how to make beef jerky. It's pretty simple, but save you some money, good trail snacks, dried mango, and then I just chucked together some dry banana, some chocolate and some walnuts in there. And Fern made what's in here. It's a nettle seed energy ball. And there was more of them. This wasn't my only. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was what Fern, Fern brought this. And it was in a massive box with a ribbon on it. So I've got, you, I've got these trail snacks and that was what was in there, look. No, it's a nettle seed. It's so a nettle seed energy ball, so nettle seeds are like a natural medicine. So they're a natural stimulant and they help the body process stress hormones and I knew how stressed I'd be hanging out with you. <laughs> there it is, shots fired, links below to the nettle ball, thanks for watching. Skidar Hostel, I believe. Don't know if it's still in use. It doesn't look like there's any roads to it or anything, it's just on its own. And that's where the path cuts off. It can go that way to your left, the easier path, and then this way, where we'll be going over High Peak, I believe. And that's the way that we've chosen. Here we are, another trail, another bilberry sesh. Just a little bit of a sweet treat, and it gives you a little bit of energy, and it tastes nice, and it cleanses your palate, and in a small way, it hydrates you. It is a labour of love having to go through them all, but I love them, and so I don't mind the labour. Let's see if we can fill Fern's new tux pot. There it is. Let's see if we can at least <laughs> half fill it, so we can have a f shovel a few handfuls into us. Challenge. Challenge accepted. Challenge shovel accepted. Up. Yeah, I've already started. I'm halfway there. There we go. She's halfway there. <laughs> we haven't been going long. <gasps> That's a good sign. <laughs> and look at that already that's trail snacks but we're gonna get it half full at least and there we are that's probably 10 minutes i reckon 
10 good minutes, both of us foraging. We've got a Torx 900, no, 750 milliliter, and it's up to the 500 mil. So there's 500 milliliters of fresh bilberries there that we don't know what we're gonna do with. What should we do is handball them into our mouths. But look. You can tell he's done more work. There you go, he's done more work. <laughs> Not necessarily, this might mean I'm a bit heavy handed. And there you go, a pot full of bilberries, or bilberries as they call them wrongly so in Scotland. Is it blaberries? Fight me, blaberries in Scotland. I'm gonna eat some. They're pretty much just blueberries. Same family. Uh oh. Oh, they are good as well. And you know what, normally when I'm picking them, I'm just putting them in my mouth one at a time. And so to just have a, like a good handful in, nice. It? Mm, it's good. It's good. It's decadent. Ant and decadent, I would like to say. <laughs> anyway, we're supposed to be on a mission here and we're just we're getting sidetracked. But we'll put a lid on them or we'll just we'll chew them as we go. But there you go, trail snacks. Look at that for a for a miniature waterfall experience. Pause it if you're that way inclined, but it's a, it's the most remarkable mine apparently, and there it is. I'll give you a shot from the side when I get up there, but know this. I'll tell you what they're mining. They're mining for carrots. There, it's a famous carrot mine. The turnip mines of Mod. I just can't see out, can you? You can't see anything there, but there is an entrance to a mine. That was some effort. Lingy hut, mate. Let's have a look in it. <laughs> this fern's just outside there. Look at it, graffiti, some playing cards, candles, a little notebook that we can write in. Look at the views from the window. Mark and Sophie was here make a nice little boudoir at night but that's not what we've got in mind because they don't sell pints um, it's good that we can graph on this wall just because everyone else has done it and here's a few highlights of mine the Tabasco sign whoever's done that salute um, oh my mushroom also salute someone's put my bum does fat <laughs> <laughs> so they can have a sort of a half-assed salute and shout out whoever did that aliens pretty good someone's put their Instagram here Born to walk, so go follow them. Mm. And they're doing the Cumbrian Way in 2022. So give them a shout. And then I went over here and I thought, I'll do mine too. <laughs> and I gave up. I was gonna put his outdoors and that's as far as I got because I was jabbing it in like an idiot. <laughs> and Fern's doing something meaningful and lovely, which is a turnip tree. <laughs> what is it? Bilberry. She's doing bilberries that we just found. It's a bit windy, so it's as if audio's a bit out there. But there we go, look, that's that's the highest point of today. You can see the wind right, you can see the cairn on top. And the views are flattening out now, so this is pretty much the end of the lakes, like the end of the the hilly clobber. And then we'll hit the lowland and the farmland and stuff tomorrow just to make our way to Carlisle. Hopefully be able to see all the pubs that we're going to be able to go to when we get down below. Meadow Pippi, hello. Uh, let's fast track up to the top, but well I'll we'll do one of these gadgets. The chosen one. The chosen ones. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and we'll put this on the cairn, Ryu and Cairn. Uh, there you go. There's our <laughs> contribution. Is that the sea? Yeah, Irish Sea. There's where we've come from. In the mountains. And that's where we're going towards Carlisle over the farmland and stuff so it flattens out. So this is literally the top. We did it. Yes, mate. <laughs> Here we go. Woo! 
Right, let's go tap out on this uh, on this trig point. Ah, oh, this is interesting, yeah. High Pike. So you've got, right, where's Carlisle on here? Carlisle, 11 miles. It's only 11 miles that way. So that's where we'll end up tomorrow. <laughs> well done, us. Here's a portion of that loveliness that once he made more lovely. In memory of Mick Lewis, who loved all these fells. He died in May, May 8th, 1944, aged 16 years old. Big up, rest in peace. Lovely. Fern, chilling out there, look. What's she looking at, you ask? That. Stunning. Stun cool Bulgaria. <laughs> They don't look as smiley, they don't look as, they don't look, they look a bit pissed off. This is like a bad dream. This is mental. Are we stepping? Are we? Oh, well, let me out. No, you're in there now, Fern. Oh, okay. They look like big bad, bad boys. Bo <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> scared of sheep, <laughs> even though she's dressed as one. <laughs> What's happening here, Fern? Look, Fern. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> these guys look aggy as they like. They look aggy. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, guy, that isn't cool. So, how much is... Oh. Right, I'm doing it. I'm going for it. <laughs> Fair, quick, I'm going to get crushed to death by loads of sheep. That'd be really embarrassing. <laughs> quick. I'm going to die with a red face. Oh, right, there you go, guys. You ever seen two fully grown adults be bullied out of a field by some sheep? Kipped under this ash tree, it was dark when we pitched up, it's just got light, leave no trace. <laughs> We've got our um, rain clobber on because it rained last night and it might rain today. Look, final day. How, how, how many miles? Um, 11 was it? 11, 10 or 11 miles, 4 <coughs> hours. Through flat country, flat, flat farmland, like this. Just found these bins here, and if you if they you recognise them on my face, just slide into my DMs and I'll meet you in the nearest pub because you got if you can find it, and I'll I'll give them back to you. I thank you. They'll be there. Some sort of festival going on or summer. Oh, it's going to rain. It's just the weather's turned. We've got the boiling in the bag suits on, but I've just felt a little bit of water come down, sir. So this could be our first, our first downpour of the trip. It is raining, you can see it bouncing on the water, look. That's good, that's good. Right, I better put the old camera away. Just in our, in our rain gear, look. It's raining. It's coming down now. Just want to say, just seen a lad doing the, um, he's doing Land's End to John O'Groats, he was just in his tent and I was shouting out some tarot readings to Fern and he was like, hello? Totally, I think he thought he was going to get sacrificed. But I got his Instagram, he's only got 92 followers so it'd be nice to go and follow him if you want. Just check out his journey as he's, as he's going from Land's End to John O'Groats. And it's that. If you can see, focus. Over grass and stone, so go check it out. He hasn't, yeah. <laughs> still good. They're still good, even though they've got grit on them. <laughs> we found this, look, we've got something to tell you, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is how we're going to break the news we're getting married here. <laughs> uh, we're just going to sit on this set here and watch some telly. It's up there somewhere, but here we are. 
in Carlisle. We've just done it, it was three miles from Dalston to Carlisle, but the I'll tell you about it later anyway, or maybe I've done a voiceover about the the road closure. The famous road closure of Dalton 2022. Which meant we had to walk down the like a B road which was just shit, no paths. So we just got our head down and got ourselves into Carlisle and here we are looking for the tourist information centre which is the end of the Cumbrian Way apparently so you ever been to a B &M? and then she says have you ever been to a B&M <laughs> and there you go that's the vlog welcome to the vlog uh, welcome to the end of the Cumbrian Way have you ever been to a B&M it's still yeah, yeah of course I have what's in it just uh, do you want to vlog it? <laughs> do you want to go in there? Hey, welcome, welcome to our B&M tour of art. <laughs> and that's it, we're in the centre of the of Carlisle. I think that's what you touch at the end, but I don't know. Ah, Do we get some flying eye? Hey, there's a tap. We could celebration water. You can have a celebratory water. That's what it's here for. For the end of the Cumbrian Way. So they're just celebrating. <laughs> Cumbrian Way! Yeah. Cumbrian <laughs> Way! See you later, see you later, Cumbrian. Joy. Mm. Gather round, gather round, see Excellent. the girl. Is it good gear? Yeah. Right then, here we go. It's worth hiking five days for, I'd say. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> and that's it, I don't know what. I don't have any final thoughts. It was a tough day today. That road really just killed us, deaded me off. And then being in civilization like this after being in the beauty of the Lake District, cut to montage. <laughs> and when I say cue montage, what I mean is cue map time, because I'm not letting you down ever again on map time. So, if you remember, I barely do, because it's been a long time since the trail. But, we woke up on what has been called Sheep Hill. Had a little wash in this, uh, in this stream here. Carried on. We worked to another glorious morning. We were really lucky with the weather. Um, we came over here and we stopped here. Stickle Barn. And which was a lovely little, I think it's a youth hostel, but they serve food there. So we had a leisurely breakfast and checked the map. And then off we went along here through this valley uh, to begin our first real ascent of the hike up here which is a bit of a leg pumper and then this is where we stopped so we we came over here then we looked back to um, to Black Crags and we decided to make a little detour around here we had a morning break here so we had views of the valley we had a coffee removed a couple of ticks and then cracked on. Round here, up over here, once you get over this ridge it opens up to some beautiful scenery. This is probably my favourite bit actually as far as scenery goes. And um, we drop down here, this is where we had a little swim here because Black Moss Pot was overrun with people, it was like butlins so we had a little swim around here. Down to here, now this is the uh, coast to coast path that I took when I did the coast to coast. We went left through this campsite and to this pub where we managed to get a sandwich and a soup and then we decided, we had another look at the map and we decided to bat on and see where we could get to all around here we hit these woods, this is lovely hiking through these woods, nice and cool some really nice scenery lovely little water stops, this is one, there's a bridge over here where Fern just decided to boot her phone over, over edge we were feeling it on legs a little bit round here we hit Derwent water and it was just beautiful this is a really nice section by the side of the water there and all through here we were looking for somewhere suitable to camp, we'd sacked off the idea of a pub and here, I've drawn a little tent here is where we camped for the night we had a fire, um, boiled our water on the fire and had some camping meals it was beautiful, really beautiful, the morning was beautiful really still, lovely sunrise um, and then we carried on some lovely little scenes through here with the sun peppering through the trees and then we started to make it into civilization. Um, we hiked into Keswick, we stopped for a breakfast and then I went to see the crew at Nordic Outdoors to pick up some stuff for the Fjellraven Classic and then we cracked on out of Keswick and up and it started to, there was some 
There was some decent elevation actually up and through these woods. Nice to blow the cobwebs out and get some actual hiking done. We skirted round here. Again, wonderful views. Now, we got to this spot. This is where we stopped to fill the water and we stopped for a little bit of a break. And I've written boots there because there was another couple who came past and they, they stopped not so, you know, they stopped quite close to us. And then they set off hiking up here and they got to about here and then Fern just started screaming at them, your boots, you forgot your boots. Um, and they were like, what? And <laughs> I was like, Fern, they're your boots. And they were Fern's boots. <laughs> they hadn't left the boots because they were hiking in their boots. Fern's boots. She didn't have any... It basically, Fern shouted, you've, lost, you've left your boots. And they were Fern's boots. We had a good laugh about that, and I still laugh about it to this very day, so that's good content. So you get to Skiddar House, and then this is where you've got your multiple choices. I'll zoom out a little bit here, look, so you can see an overview. You could go this way all the way around to meet up with there and we went this way along here cut round this ridge this is where we found our bilberries we stopped for like 15 minutes um, and filled the Turks pot with bilberries kept going had a little swim in this waterfall here really nice and really just needed at that time of the day and it sort of set us up for getting up here past these carrot mines up this is all nice hiking here. Then it gets a little bit steep here. This was a a real chew. We were just sort of head down, crack on. And Fern nailed it, to be honest. She absolutely, just not complaining whatsoever. Just, you know, and I know her, her feet were hurting, but she's a trooper. So we got up here. The boff is around here somewhere. And then we keep going up to High Pike, to the trig point on High Pike. We had a little rest there. And then you start to make your, your descent down. This is really the last bit of the Lake District. You've got beautiful views out to the, the Irish Sea and and back from whence ye came. And then we headed down. And this is where you join up with the, the alternate route. I can't remember where it was. But we, after getting <laughs> bullied by some sheep, we might, it might have been here. It might have been here, but it might have been here. I'm not sure. But there was a pub, it could well have been here. It was a really nice pub, really nice atmosphere. We had a few, did we? I think we got three main meals and just shared them all out. Desserts, the locks, we were starving at this point. So we filled our boots and it started to get dark. So I know we came off piste, around here maybe. And we pitched the tent. We pitched in the dark, got up early and off we went. My camera's not waterproof so I couldn't do much filming. But it was still really nice. It's nice and it's it's all lowland, sort of farmland, woodland, things like that. And we stopped off at a church somewhere around here because we saw people loading up the church for a wedding and they kindly let us fill our water bottles up in the church. And then we cracked on and then along here and we got to Dalston. And a couple of the people that we'd met on the trail had said that this uh, th this tr track here was closed off and that you couldn't use it which was a bit of a shame we had a lovely breakfast actually in Dalton and the lady sort of felt sorry for us because we looked absolutely knackered and we were really hungry so she gave us some free toast before our breakfast as well just to keep us going marmalade on toast shout out her that was a, a wonderful gesture so we had to do we had to go down this B road instead of going through this nice bit so we were just sort of head down crack on there's cars going past um so i didn't do any filming here because we just really wanted to get it get it done we could see like we could sense the finish line into carlisle and that's where we ended up at the end at the tourist information center in carlisle i'll take you back um it's very different very hustly and bustly and now we've got to get the train back to the start we haven't got to we get to we get to get the train back to the start and then we get to get back in Alaska and eat loads of snacks. And that's it. Right, well, thanks for joining us along the way. Thanks for Fert to Fern. Thanks for having for joining me, guys. Me. Thanks for having us <laughs> for everything. We did some foraging, didn't we? We got some stuff foraged. We, I, we foraged some mushrooms that we lost. <laughs> we didn't. I haven't bought it. We, I haven't bought the foraging, but I've enjoyed the walk. We foraged them, then lost them. So <laughs> someone else got to forage them for us. Maybe a bin or a seagull. Yeah. And we got someone some bilberries and them. stuff. 
and she smashed it to be fair like there were times when I look back and she was just trooper absolute trooper another one another one too many, too many knuckles <laughs> right anyway thanks very much for watching take care of yourselves see you soon bye for now and there we have it the Cumbria Way completed. This was the first multi-day hike I've done where I wasn't focused on smashing out the miles and it was really nice to go at a more leisurely pace and not have to worry about things like chafing and blisters. This walk is perfect for those just starting out in the world of multi-day hiking and it gives you some truly breathtaking scenery. I'd like to thank Fern for being my first ever multi-day hike partner and I'm looking forward to lots more adventures in the future. I'll leave links to her YouTube and Instagram below, so go check it out if you fancy up in your foraging game. Thanks as always to everyone who followed along. I really do appreciate all the kind words. I'll be back soon for another multi-day solo hike with plenty more blisters and moaning. But for now, it's been a real treat to slow down the pace and stop and smell the roses. I send you now but love. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.